Hi everybody. I thought today I would just do a video about different ways that you can use soft textured pieces or materials to create some really great texture in your art, whether it's in an art journal or on an art board or a canvas or whatever you're working on. It's just a really cool, fun way to incorporate texture. So for example, corrugated cardboard. We all get a kajillion boxes from Amazon. I know you do. Admit it. Tear those up. You can get some really great effects with corrugated cardboard. Um, twine. This is just kind of a heavy kitchen twine. That works good. You can put it in all kinds of configurations or cut up little bits and pieces and line them up or whatever you want to do. Um, tool and lace. This is a really old piece. It came off of something. I, I don't know what, but it has the really fine tool attached to it. Now I could rip pieces of this off or use the lace by itself. Cheesecloth is one of my favorite things. You just cut a piece off and you can pull it and push it and open that weave up and just create some really great texture. I've also cut pieces and just diluted in a little Tupperware container or what have you, diluted some regular old craft acrylic paint to the color that I liked and dunked it in and let it soak overnight. And I have this really pretty blue. Or you can wrap it around a rusty piece of metal and spray it with some vinegar and let it sit for a few days. And you can get this really great mottled dark and light. You can see it better on here. Some spots are dark, some are light. That's got to be one of my favorites. So that's cheesecloth. Um, <clears throat> this is one type of medical gauze. It's real soft, pillowy almost, and you can pull holes through it and lay it down. It's almost like a cotton batting, which probably would also work, but this just came on a roll. And as you can see, this is what it looked like before I pulled it apart. Just a real soft medical gauze and then you get this cool piece that you can work with. This is another kind of medical gauze. It's rolled stretched gauze and you get a totally different look with that. You can pull that apart. You might have to clip some of those strings but you can get it. You could even stencil through that. That's another thing. Plaster, <clears throat> plaster wrap. I love this stuff. It's messy as all get out, but you can cut pieces of it. You can cut shapes out of it. You just cut whatever you want off the roll, dip it in water, put it down and rub it, and you have a really cool textured plaster piece. Of course, everybody likes to use empty tea bags. I use all the pieces. Some I cut, some I leave whole. I like to use these little edges. And the other thing that we all have a ton of are baby wipes. Used baby wipes. Not used for babies, but used <laughs> for painting. Um, so these are just, this is one that I just sat aside yesterday after I got done working and let it dry. But I like to just tear strips of them. They tear real easy. And you get these nice fuzzy edges and bits of color that come up here and there. Those can be glued down and used. 
um, threads, all kinds of threads. I have embroidery thread, I have quilting thread, I have regular sewing thread, as well as different weights of twine. Um, hemp cord is good to use. So there's just any number of things you can use if you just think about it. This is a one of those mesh bags you get from the grocery store with your produce. This had avocados in it. But you can cut pieces of that. You can use it as a stencil or you can lay it down and paint over it. They're usually orange or green. So, but that also makes a really great texture. So, I think I'm going to clear some of this out and we'll just play with some of this stuff in this mixed media journal and take a look at how they all look. So I'll be back. Okay, before we start putting things down and taking a look at what they look like, I just want to talk for a minute about what do we use to put them down with. I've got plaster all over this paper. Um, if you have lightweight things like tissue paper or tea bag papers, regular fluid matte medium works best, I think. Um, or if you have Mod Podge, this is an ultra matte Mod Podge, but you can use Mod Podge. I don't. I prefer the matte as opposed to the glossy. Um, for a little bit thicker things, like maybe the baby wipes, this um, matte gel, it's just like a soft paste, you can see down in there maybe, coming to the bottom of that one, but that works well for like mid-weight things, for heavier weight or more hard to glue down things like maybe the cheesecloth. Um, or the this bag that might kind of resist sticking because it's plastic or even the cardboard I would go to a heavy um, matte gel it just makes things a little bit easier or my favorite crafting glue which is crafters pick the ultimate this sticks really well and really fast so those are some options Try your favorite glue and see what works best for you. So I think because of dry time, I'm going to start with a piece of this plaster cloth. And I'm going to just dip it for one second or two into my water basin. Kind of squeeze out a little of the excess. You notice I took my rings off because this is messy. And then just open it up. Now I could have cut this into smaller pieces or whatever I wanted to do when I lay it down. I can crunch it up. The more crunched up it is, the longer it will take to dry, but you get the idea. Now, now the plaster should stick right to the paper. Then you just rub it and the plaster is more or less released from that gauzy material that it's impregnated on and you get you can get a real smooth plaster finish you can pick the texture up with your finger like that and keep more of the texture in it you can press things into it and you can make it as sculptural as you want But, like I said, that's going to take a little bit to dry, so I wanted to put that one on first because I want to also go over some of these things with paint and ink and show you what they look like because white on white's a little hard to see. I will pick this up right now, though, so you can, so I get it off my hands, you can see a little bit better the texture that you get. It's just really fun to play with try to stay in focus for you or in frame for you. Um, then this gauze, I'm just going to cut a piece of it off. My scissors go. So just cut a piece off the roll. 
you can pull it apart as much as you want, make holes, fray out the edges, however you want it to look. So again, you can crunch it up. This makes really cool angel wings. So for something like that, I would use the matte gel or a glue of some sort. Find a brush here. And I'm going to go right around this piece of gauze. And just be liberal with your adhesive. And just push it down onto the page. Oh, that was a little too liberal. Now it's going to flatten out where you apply the glue and push it down. So just be mindful of that depending on how you want to use it. You could leave some edges loose if you want to keep that fuzzy look. If you're going to paint over it, you're better off adhering it completely to the page, just flattening it out. You can push it however you want it to be into shape. Again, being fabric, it's going to take a little while to dry. You can see what great texture it gives. And then sticking with the matte gel, I think I'll go ahead and put a piece of this baby wipe right up here. And this sort of like sort of like deli paper or tissue paper would behave. It kind of melts into the background. So if I had a background color underneath this as opposed to just the white page, I would probably see a lot of it through that baby wipe. And then let's try a piece of this different medical gauze. And this stuff, I mean, it's easy to get and it's really inexpensive. This was the end of the roll, like it was a new roll. So it has threads that are connected at the end that's kind of holding it together to keep it from, like, kind of like a hem. But if you clip those, you can pull this apart. And the sides are the same way. They're like a finished edge. So they're going to be thicker. Or you can cut them off. But I just want you to see the different effects. And typically I wouldn't use all of these in one piece. You know, on one piece of art, but this will just be our sample page. You can kind of pull those strings down if you want that are sticking out. Stick them down to the page. And I might go over the top of that. I'm going to take just this. You all have used lace. You know what lace looks like. I'm not going to put the lace on, but I am just going to put this little piece of tool. And you know, tool comes in all different weights. So heavier ones will look different than finer ones, but I'm just going to overlap. This has some blue paint on it. So you can see it a little bit better than just the white stuff. Now when this all dries, I might have to come back and re-glue some edges. It's hard to know while it's wet what's going to stick and what's not. Like this right here doesn't seem to want to stay down. I'm just going to stick some more matte medium under there. 
And then, let's see, just using regular matte medium, I'm going to just put some on the page. I'm going to go ahead and stick these tea bag papers down. And most of you, I'm sure, have used these in your artwork. Again, you can see through these papers. So you can see where I overlapped that. And depending on where the tea settled as it was drying, you'll get some dark and some lighter spots. This is just the edge that I tore off to get the tea out. So that's very cool. And those are basically free. If you're a tea drinker, you already have them, right? Um, let me switch to the heavy gel. Put a couple pieces of this cardboard down. And you can use just the side that looks like that, or if you go to the inside and peel some of the backing paper off the cardboard, you might get multiple layers depending on your box. But you want a pretty good amount. My gel has paint in it. And a pretty good amount of the gel under there. And you might have to play with it a little bit. Go on my next page. And wait for it to dry. Just keep pushing it down into the gel until the gel starts to grab and dry. That piece doesn't want to stay on there. There we go. And sometimes just your heavier craft glue like tacky glue or that ultimate glue works even better. So like I said, play with your favorite glues. See what works with what. Different materials are going to need different kinds of glue. And of course if you're working with metal, then you're going to want E6000 probably. That works really good. So that works really well. And I might want to take a piece of this twine. I would just run it through glue. Just put the glue on. You're going to get it all over your fingers, but I find this is the easiest way to get glue on it. Or, if you prefer you can always punch the glue onto the page and then sit the string into it. Pretty easy. This, um, for some reason, this one is very I'll cut a piece, but I noticed when I was cutting it apart, 
I was getting just a ton of little tiny pieces off of it that were like coming off of it. Maybe I've scrunched it up like that and that seemed to help a bit so I didn't get so many little chunks coming off. I'm probably still going to but So you like those? Cut this off right there. It's fused together. But for this I would definitely put the glue down and then push it into the glue. I think that's all I had out here as far as examples of soft materials to use. So I will dry these and then maybe we'll add some paint. Okay, I dried everything with my heat tool. It's pretty dry. Um, the plaster, if we get it real wet, might kind of reactivate and mix in with the paint a little bit. I did notice as I was using my heat tool, this plastic bag from the heat kind of frazzled up, melted on the ends, which was kind of cool, but be careful of that. So I'm going to just start with some regular old bottled craft paint and just mix it with some water on my brush. Kind of watery because we want to get down in. And I'm just going to do a little bit of each of these on each one of these pieces that we put on here. Just to get an idea, I'll go out onto the paper so we can see where the edges are. And we'll get an idea of what each one of these looks like with the different kinds of paint on them. That gives you an idea of craft paint. Now that's taking um, unevenly there because some of the paper has the matte medium on it and then some of it doesn't. So where there's no matte medium, it's going to absorb into the paper more. Okay, so I'm just rinsing my brush out. And then I have some open high flow acrylic in green gold and I'm going to use that just straight and it's just transparent right out of the bottle but that seems to be really soaking into that plaster I kind of like the way that looks this I'm going to have to pat into this gauze I think Okay, so that is our high flow acrylic. Then I have some acrylic ink and olive green light, and I have a feeling this is going to pretty much be the same as the high flow acrylic because the high flow acrylic really is really like acrylic ink. But I rinse my brush all out. Aside from the difference in color, I don't think we're going to see much of a difference. 
maybe once it's dry it might have kind of a different textural feel when it dries but pretty much the same as the high flow acrylic it's a little more opaque here you can see the difference over that tea bag paper it is a little more opaque so you'll get a different look okay And then I have this color wash paint by Tattered Angels. It comes in a diff several different colors. This is an older bottle. It's called Tattered Angels Color Wash Paint. The newer ones, ones are called Color Wash Tint. But it's basically, the, it's the same stuff. It's just renamed for whatever reason. But this is a green tea. And that's just straight out of the bottle on the plaster and on the gauze on the paper. Everything that I pulled out was a Distress Spray Stain and some watercolors, but we really don't have any empty spots left. I'm just going to spray some spray stain in here. Pick it up in my brush. And we'll go over part of this. bag paper and again can just start layering colors see what effects you get Maybe, like I said, I did, I pulled out my super cheap watercolors. Maybe I'll just put some watercolor in and around the rest of it. Let's go with this orange here. And we'll brighten it up. And you can see the that gel is resisting the watercolor, which can be kind of interesting too. Right. Moral of the story is there's lots of things you can do to provide cool texture in your art. Most of what we use today is not expensive at all. I mean, most of you, I'm sure, already have a couple different kinds of paint and maybe some inks and sprays and watercolors. That's really all you need. But the cardboard is free. The bag is free. The um, twine is really cheap. You probably already have some. The medical gauze, those rolls last forever, and they're cheap. Tea bag papers are free. Once you drink your tea, you got it. Um, and even the plaster roll is not that expensive. You get a lot and a lot goes a long way. So 
play with your different, um, I keep wanting to say substrates, but they're just materials. And this is not a real attractive piece, I understand, because it's just kind of a hodgepodge. But now I can maybe add some things in here, maybe some more of that plaster or whatever, wait for it to dry and just paint the whole thing with white gesso. And it would probably be really pretty just like that or an opportunity for me to then just start over and actually pick a color scheme and work a piece up from there. But I just wanted to try the different kinds of paint and whatnot, inks, and see how each one took on these different materials. Okay, before I go, I just realized I didn't add the cheesecloth on here, so... I'm just going to take this piece. I put quite a heavy layer of the heavy matte gel in there. And I'm just going to overlap this and pull it through here and press it into that gel. And I'll come back and put some more glue on the edges. I covered this entire piece after I put the cheesecloth down. I covered it all with white gesso, a pretty heavy layer. I really pounced it into the highly textured parts. It's almost dry. I dried it with the heat tool. And I really like it. Um, as you may or may not know, some colorants will bleed into the gesso if you put gesso on top. So I have some green and oranges coming through here and there just in a paler version which I really like and the other tip that I wanted to give you is if you're impatient like me and you want things dried off so you can move on dry it quite a while on one side of your paper and then turn to the other side dry it from the other side and just keep flipping it back and forth that will also help your paper to stay flatter and it will buckle and curl a lot less. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and maybe share it out to a Facebook group or with a friend. That really helps my channel and I appreciate it a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate that as well. And hit that red button and ring my bell so you're notified the next time I upload a video. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.